Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome, everybody, to Celebrating Act 2. You know, as we get older, there's a tendency to slow down. Art, <laughs> you know about that tendency, don't you? I don't know. When I get older, I'll let you know. <laughs> well, the problem with slowing down or, or maybe thinking that you need to slow down uh, is that sometimes we're giving into an idea that we're too old, we're too tired, we're too anything to make a difference anymore. And if you've ever felt that way, we want you to meet a man who has never given into that idea. Uh, he is not slowing down, even the ripe old age of 76, uh, especially when it comes to helping people. Uh, so Celebrating Act Two finds him very inspiring. We want you to meet Chaplain Dove Cohen. Welcome, Chaplain Dove. How are you? Hi, Dove. Hi there, John and Art. Thank you so much for inviting me to, to share your screen. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. So um, you, uh, the thing that I, th I think that uh, we find most fascinating today, although you have a long history of helping people, is that you have a program called Food to Life, uh, foodtolife.org, which is... Uh, in memory of Kevin Dobson, but it's, um, could you explain a little bit more about that? Because you're serving tens of thousands of meals uh, a week uh, to a variety of people, and uh, uh, we'd like to talk about your, this latest venture of you helping people. Sure, thank you very much. Um, we started the program when the COVID pandemic began in March uh, of this year, 2020, and we soon realized that in order for the program, there were so many people who needed help that in order for us to continue the program after the COVID pandemic calms down a bit uh, is to reach out to the community and have corporate and private people sponsor it. Right now, it began with and is being uh, run by the Jewish War Veterans of the United States Department of California. And what the program is essentially 21 meals a week are delivered to veterans, seniors, and those who are medically challenged. Um, they can register at foodtolife.org, the word to, or they can go to the phone and call 949-215-9995. Uh, <clears throat> Within a week, food will start arriving at their door, 21 meals a week. Uh, we are thrilled that we're able to do this. We expand from Orange County into San Diego, San Bernardino, Riverside, and just in September, we started in L.A. County. So if you know anyone who is in need of food, if you are hungry, or if you know someone who could benefit from the program, please reach out to us. We'd really like to be able to help as many people as possible. Now, uh, I just want to... Uh, uh make sure, uh, I think I understand it well, but I uh, want to clarify it with you, Dove, that <clears throat> while you've done a lot of work uh, uh, for on behalf of uh, veterans, uh, this is not just for veterans, although it, 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 that's primarily why you were formed, because Kevin Dobson himself was a veteran and very concerned about veteran uh, uh, affairs and activities. But this is for anybody who's food challenge in the uh, right now in the Southern California area, and I suspect you're going to expand, but it, if it's just a hungry family who's found themselves out on the street, or if it's a military family of somebody, especially of the lower enlisted ranks, who are overseas and uh, on food stamps, perhaps. I know a lot of them uh, are food challenged. This is for everybody, not just veterans. Is that correct? That's correct. Veterans, seniors, and those in need. If you are one of those people or you know someone, please reach out to us. We never give anyone a handout. We give them a, a hand up. Uh, Dove, how many meals are you distributing currently uh, as we speak in November of, uh, of 2020? And where did you start? How many meals did you start uh, nine months ago? Well, when we started, we had about 10 families. And so we were delivering 10 times 21 meals a week, um, 210. Um, last Friday, we delivered over 5,000. And we deliver three times a week. On Monday, 
six meals for Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, six for Thursday, Friday, and Friday, nine for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Uh, we're adding all kinds of different people um, in patients and hospitals as they're being discharged. They get their medicine, but many of them just don't have food. We take care of that. So again, we invite everyone to, uh, to make reference to our program and to, if you need it, please call us or go online. Thanks so much. So Dove, uh, this is a, a tremendous growth pattern. I mean, I just can't believe how fast you've grown. Uh, obviously, you, you must have many, many, I don't know whether it's thousands or hundreds of volunteers to get this done. And you also need support. Where does the food go? I mean, you need money. People need to donate. Am I correct? Absolutely. People who go on the website to foodtolife.org can either enroll to receive meals or donate to support our program. And we've had people that have really stepped up. Uh, one of the very first was uh, the uh, Union Bank. Uh, we know them through other veteran programs, and they said, we want to be there and they sent us a very nice check. Um, we also have a wonderful relationship with Access Paratransit, where they are picking up meals and delivering them to buildings that many of them have 60, 80, 120 veterans or seniors living in them in a community. And so Access helps us get the food to those locations. Um, and the other group that I'd like to mention is California State Commanders Veterans Council, 21 of the most senior people of the largest veterans organizations in the state of California. Uh, they've been with us from day one, and we just had a, uh, a Zoom meeting the other day on Friday, and uh, they are going to be funding, and they're going to be making referrals. There are an awful lot of senior veterans, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, uh, that just are having a really tough time, especially during the pandemic. We're happy to be able to do something to help. That's wonderful work you're doing. I, I'm curious, obviously you've expanded so quickly into all of Southern California. Mm -hmm. um, what, at what point do you expand into California and beyond into other states? So you to help, can you help other veterans organizations create the same program? Exactly. What we're inviting people to do is either replicate what we've done, we'll share any information that they're interested in having. And for those that can't or, or, or will not, um, through the California State Commanders Veterans Council, they're located throughout all of the state of California. We've already had calls from Stockton, San Francisco, Fresno, and Redding, uh, people asking how can we do what, we're, what you're doing and do it in our neighborhoods. So we're working closely with anyone who asks us uh, and we've reached out proactively to these 21 largest groups. And I'm talking about American Legion, VFW, AMVETS, Disabled American Veterans, Vietnam Veterans of America, uh, the Purple Heart Society, the phenomenal organizations and they do a great deal for veterans but they're not doing food. And here we have the missing link. And uh, it's exciting. That's all I can tell you. Every day, it is exciting. Uh, it's uh, a great uh, story. And, yeah. and uh, I know you do a lot of other work. And uh, uh, just a, a, a couple of quick questions for you. Uh, sure. uh, John, and I know the answer to this. We've been in touch with you for a while now. Uh, but uh, I'm particularly uh, uh, touched by the fact that one of your other charities, uh, charitable organizations, you run honor guards for uh, funerals. But before you answer that, I know uh, uh, we originally thought, oh, Chaplain Dove is a, a special uh, uh, Hebrew name that you use or something, or it's a piece and uh, like a bird. Uh, so before you tell us about the honor guard, uh, how did you get your name Chaplain Dove? Okay. Uh, when I first arrived in the Air Force in June of 1962, a long time ago, um, they had our names up on the door, and mine said Chaplain Cohen, and I took it down, reversed it, and took a marker and wrote DOV and taped it up on 
over my office. And people would go by all the chaplain's offices and they'd look at Dove and say, what the hell is that? And they'd come in and I'd say, I'll tell you, sit down. And they'd sit and I'd say, it's directing opportunities to veterans. That's what I do. I started doing it 58 years ago, still doing it. And uh, it's exciting for me to be able to invite other people to get on board. People say, what can I do? We always have some answer for that. And uh, the answer is to get involved, make a commitment to something and help people. And the Honor Guard, the Honor Guard uh, uh, stuff that you do? The Honor Guard program is, uh, I call it the Legacy Honor Guard program. And unfortunately, when veterans uh, die and uh, uh, they want to have a military funeral, which they're entitled to, uh, the military, the Department of Defense is not always able to provide an Honor Guard. They're, they're provided subject to something happening. What we are doing is training people, getting the uniforms for them so they're sharp and they look great. Um, and sometime in 2021, uh, we're going to begin actually having honor guards at the funerals at the national cemeteries. Um, it's a program that is in process. Uh, everything came to a screeching halt because of the pandemic. And instead of being able to have a normal funeral at the National Cemetery, people were limited to 10 attending. So many of them, if cremated, just decided to wait. And uh, it's, it's going to take us six months or a year once we start again to cover all of these. And there won't be enough honor guards. We're going to make sure that every family that requests military honors has military honors. That's the Legacy Honor Guard program. Now, Chaplain Dove, you uh, explained to me when I asked you uh, uh, earlier this week about uh, a chaplain. I thought it was just a military designation, and you explained, no, you can be a, a chaplain uh, serving people almost anywhere, hospitals or whatever. And you, this has really been your career. You got out of the service after, what, six years or something? Yes. And, and you've remained a chaplain. Uh, serving people, supporting people, uh, spiritual guidance, all of those kinds of things. And that's really driven your whole career, hasn't it? It really has been. It's been 58 years of joy. Um, I've, I've dealt with all kinds of problems from people doing a funeral to the good part where we do weddings, um, working with people in the community, because as a Jewish chaplain, um, 4% of the military were Jews, which means 96% of the people I dealt with were not. And so I do more, I, I tell people I spend more time in church than in the synagogue. And that's now expanded to in mosques and churches and Buddhist centers, uh, because I, I speak frequently to all of these different groups. Um, it's been exactly what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, I knew very early on, uh, I was in seminary when the word went out that we really need chaplains in the military. They asked me what would I do, and I said, sure. And uh, I left, was on a plane that night. I landed in San Antonio at Lackland Air Force Base. And the rest is history. Uh, it's five months at Lackland as the chaplain, the chaplain there had left. Uh, then they transferred me, and I knew I was gonna go to Vietnam but I didn't, they sent me to Paris, France. I had eight bases in France, Spain, Morocco, Libya, and Germany. Uh, did Torah convocations, retreats uh, at Birch's Garden, Germany, and then came back and expanded, extended my time uh, voluntarily because they needed someone in Florida at Eglin Air Force Base, which is one of the largest Air Force bases in the world. Uh, and I was there for another eight months uh, with the community. Then I hired someone from the civilian population to come in one day a week during the time until they could get someone to replace me. So I, I got a chance to do some amazing things. I hold a world's record, by the way, in Europe. Passover, uh, the first two nights there are seders or meals with a, a, a service. Um, I did 16 
in eight days at eight different bases. Wow. I, I don't have any fear that anyone will ever uh, duplicate that record. So that, that, <laughs> so you were officially on the Seder circuit. I was really <laughs> Seder circuit. I created the Seder circuit. And there's nothing <laughs> that, that is more exhilarating than going from France into Spain, into Morocco, into Libya, and then back up to France and then going to Germany to do Passover Seders. And the other thing I always did, most people think of a Passover Seder as a Jewish program, but I would go to a base and there might be 30 or 40 or 50 Jews based there. But I would invite the Protestant and Catholic communities. And so we would have 250 to 400 at a Seder. And when the Air Force looked at the records, they said, where did you get all these people? We don't have that many people who are Jewish. I said, who said it had to be only for Jews? Everyone knows about the Exodus from Egypt. Everyone has it in their Bible, if it's a Christian Bible or a Jewish Bible. So the Last Supper? Exodus. Right. Yeah. So uh, That's we great. I want to make sure that uh, we have an opportunity again uh, uh, to let people... Uh, uh, I mean, so many things to discuss. We're not going to have time. We're going to have to have you back because there's so much other work you do uh, uh, with prisons and... Uh, over the years, uh, uh, so many charitable organizations that are worthy, many of which you're still involved with. But uh, hey, getting... I, I touch on the on the prison for just a minute. Yes, yeah, sure. Sure. Okay. Um, got a call from the warden at the women's prison in Corona, and she said, "I have a a veteran who got into trouble after leaving the service, honorably discharged. Um, she's asking me about benefits for her children. Uh, what can I tell her?" And I said, "I have no idea." So I called Major General Peter Gravett, who was the Secretary of Veterans Affairs for the state of California. And I said, Peter, I have a problem. I don't have answers and I'm not used to not having answers. Will you come out to the prison with me and bring some people from your office in Sacramento and let's get all the veterans that are there, whether they're prisoners or they are employees of the prison and anyone who's a veteran and will take questions and will solve problems. And he said, certainly. And that's the kind of man that Major General Peter Gravett is. So he and his wife, who is a colonel, and seven people from the um, Calvet office in Sacramento came out to the prison. We had a luncheon. We had all of these discussions. And uh, from that day of 2012 to today, the program has grown into other prisons and people now know that they have benefits. And it, it's just been, it's a wonderful thing to be able to do, to solve a problem and ask for help and have people help. And people don't say no if the cause is right. Okay, uh, just to, uh, uh, to, before we do a tease uh, for the next, uh, uh, we're gonna have to have you back. Uh, what is the name of the uh, website and phone number for the Food to Life uh, uh, so people can call you so they can either donate or participate? Sure. So foodtolife.org, F-O-O-D-T-O-L-I-F-E dot org, foodtolife.org is the website. You can either donate or you can enroll to receive meals. And if you'd like to call 949-215-9995. Okay, uh, John, um, do you want to tease the next episode? Okay. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it now because uh, this is really food to life and uh, the other many wonderful things that Dove has done over the years, uh, for close to 60 years in the Veterans Affairs. But I, this is a tease, Dove. You don't have permission to talk about it, but at the tender age of uh, 62, uh, 60 you something? Start, started a whole new romance in your life. A new, Not only a new romance, but Dove, I think we need to have you back to explain to other people how they can keep going. Where do you get the energy? What drives you? How about all those people that turn 50 and say, oh, I'm over the hill and I can't do anything? And you, some, you have the answers for those. That's why you need to come back. And sometimes they're 40 or 30 and they still, have, they, they've run out of gas and we want to pump them up. 
Come you on. haven't run out of gas yet, have you? Never run out of gas because I recognize that I have a gift, and if I don't use it, shame on me. Uh, I will tell you that everyone out there can do something, and it, whether it's volunteer at a local at the the Red Cross or call a local hospital and say, can I help deliver mail or deliver magazines? I mean, there's always something that you can do, whether you have an hour a week, an hour a month, or an hour a day, whatever it is, there's always a place. And one of the places where you can find over 2,000 places to go is to look up Big Sunday. Big Sunday's been going for 21 years, they support over 2,000 nonprofits. And if you call Big Sunday, um, they will guide you to some place that will fit with your particular interests. Well, thank, thank you for asking about that. Yeah. Good. And, and so next time, as Art alluded to, we're going to talk about romance. 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 Great thing to talk about. Good. Good. Thank you, Doug. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Take care, everyone. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.